folks this is broken takes and today we're talking running backs that's right ladies and gentlemen i'm your host ali and this is another episode of broken takes before we get started i'd like to address a few things first of all if you're new to broken takes welcome this is a recorded episode um we talk various different subjects right now we're having a series going on over the different positions that we really feel the miami dolphins will draft in this coming up 2023 draft as well as we'll be talking about certain players that we really strongly have a chance and more than likely will draft um, at certain positions as i said earlier we're talking running backs today i have a list of four running backs um, that uh, i really um, think is a very high chance that we will either target or end up with one of these guys um, we'll talk about their pros and their cons um and uh, we'll get through it so before we start i want to say shout out to our sponsors new seasons new gear show the world what it means to be a fan in 100 percent authentic gear fanatics officially licensed everything So thank you to Fanatics. Um, if you'd like to purchase anything from Fanatics and get your officially licensed gear, like these Miami Dolphin hats I always wear, um, the New Era hats and stuff like that, or other memorabilia that you're looking for, check out the link below in the description. Um, if you use the link below, it helps out the channel. We really appreciate it. Um, that also being said, um, shout out to our other sponsors. We have a new sponsor called Doobie, Doobie Energy Drinks. Um, check them out. They have the claim that their energy drinks, uh, that you don't get that shaking or crashing that you would um, compared to some of the other companies out there. They also have certain vitamins and nutrients that are actually really good for the brain and you know helps you maintain focus and everything like that. Um, check out their stuff. They, they got some good stuff um, and supplements that can help you out. Um, also, Backroom Collections. Backroom Collections, unfortunately, I don't have their logos here, nor do I have doobies. I will get, be getting that soon. We'll get that fixed probably in the next episode or two. Um, but check out Backroom Collection. They got some really, really cool um, artwork and canvas artwork and stuff for Miami Dolphins and other sports as well. Um, also, if you collect uh, little mini helmets, they got accessories and stuff like that for them. They have some really cool stuff. If you want to um, check them out, use the link below. Um, as well in the description. And also use code hashtag TFTG to save 10% off of your backroom collection order. So thank you to the sponsors. Really appreciate all of you. Um, now let's get to business. Let's actually talk about running backs. So we're talking about running backs galore for the, the draft. Now I know for a fact that my list is going to be completely different than everybody else's. Um, I specifically went after guys that I felt with one would fall into our current draft positions and draft picks that we have Two, they, um, they would fall in the line with certain needs that we have, or I would say the scheme that we run and how we would benefit off of them. Remember we generally run a running back by committee. Um, and because of that, 
we don't need necessarily a bell cow style running back um, to be on the team necessarily. Um, now, these guys are similar but different in different ways. Um, we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about their pros and cons. And, uh, yeah, let's start off with the first guy. Now, the first guy I'm going to bring up here, um, he's the guy that I don't think he's going to end up falling to our 52nd pick. I have him on the list because he will fall somewhere in the second round. Um, I believe he will. Um, I don't know if it will be within the first 10 picks of the second round. There is a slight, slight chance he drops to us at 52. Could the Dolphins really pull the trigger on a running back? History tells us no. But at, well, a running back in the second round, I should say. No, they probably won't do that. Um, Mike McDaniel's history and Chris Greer's history – they generally wait to the later rounds to actually run, uh, get a running back eventually. But the difference compared to previous years, in my experience, I, don't, I can't remember the last time that we had no running backs under a contract in our in our building at all prior to free agency or or the draft. It's been a long time. So I really think that as much as we don't want, we want to say, oh no, they're not going to do it. This could be the year, and that is why I have this guy on this list. So let's talk about him. Everybody's favorite, Jameer Gibbs, running back, Alabama. Check him out. He's currently 20 years of age. He's going to be 21 years of age um, by the time he gets drafted. So he's super young, 5'11", 200 pounds, projected 40 time, 4.46 seconds. In 2022, Gibbs averaged 6.1 yards per carry for 926 yards and seven touchdowns. He also had 44 receptions for 444 yards and three scores. Really talented kid. This kid, he had, he's very, very explosive, um, very fast. Um, I've, I've watched the video on him. All of these guys, unfortunately, I don't have video to show on the show. Um, but check out, check out, go online, look up highlights. The kid breaks ankles um, in the highlight rail. Uh, the way he cuts corners, you know, you know, zips past people, breaking tackles, it's ridiculous. I, he's honestly the second best running back in this draft. Um, in, my, in some ways, he has the most skill set compared to all the other running backs as well, which speaking of which, let's talk about that. <clears throat> so, as I said, best skill skit of any running back in this class will truly fit into any scheme. So any scheme, no matter what team, could put this guy plug and play. He's going to be a very sought-after guy. That's why I don't think he'll fall, but he's on this list because they haven't projected going anywhere between the first and third round in some mock drafts. That's It's kind of all over the place. A lot, you have to also understand that the combine has not happened yet. So once the combine has happened, you know, idea of where people are going to go are going to come closer together and we'll have a better understanding and a more educated guess of, you know, what we may be targeting or what we might not be targeting. So continuing, great pass catcher with a more advanced route tree than route uh, would be expected of a running back. So already the guy has different skill sets, of cat, you know, being a pass catcher can run different routes. That's good to hear. Strength to complement a power back rushing attack if need be. Electric speed allowing him to easily burn tacklers on corners. Yes, this guy hits the corner, he's gone. He has electric speed, very fast. Um, you know, you watch the tape, it's ridiculous. And the way he cuts corners, how he um, can shift around players, the adjustments he makes, it's really impressive. Um, has vision and confidence to hit holes without second thought. I like that. Determined. He already knows what he wants to do. He sees it and takes it. You know, no second guessing or anything like that. Will only be 21 years of old by the time he's drafted. We've already talked about that. Possesses fluidity as a runner. Can stop on a dime and then turn the jets on at will. That's great. That I think, you know, he can stop, cut, move, you know, spin, and then take off if he needs to. Um, has been clocked at 22.3 miles per hour, 
on one of his 70 plus yard touchdowns. That's really fast. That's almost as fast as Raheem Mostert. So that's pretty impressive. Um, let's see. Now we're moving into the weaknesses. Pass blocking leaves much to be desired. Yeah, we definitely need running backs that can pass block. Um, I'm okay with if they're not that great at it, as long as they can make the reads and know what the, you know where the blocks are needed. Then we can coach at you know. Hopefully, our coaches can come in and help you know better teach or better um, analyze the you know help them analyze where their issues are and help them get better understanding on how to block uh, block better. Get low, get your hands up, you know, underneath, kind of like underneath the chest of the of the offensive linemen, you know, and you know, be able to help them stand their ground and whatnot. Um, has less weight than expected of a power back if he is adopted into an offense that uses him as a bell cow. He would need to add muscle to compete with the NFL defensive lines. Very interesting. Yeah, I mean, he's not the biggest guy, um, you know, so. 200 pounds, 5'11". Um, he could gain... I, I could see him getting a little bit more muscle. The guy is super fast. I, you know... I don't... In our situation, we don't really need him to be that bell cow kind of guy. You know, we have a running back room by committee. I think he, he would be very experienced and very well fit in that type of system. All right. So, also, comparison. The comparison for this guy... And I didn't see it until I watched the video, and you'll see it. A lot of people are saying this is the Alvin Kamara of this draft. The guy is ridiculously fast, looks and moves like Alvin Kamara. Um, you know, that's somebody that a lot of people have said that they compare him to. So very interesting. That's Jameer Gibbs, you know, probably the second best running back. I don't see us getting him. I think he's a high second round or late first round pick, to be honest. All right, next guy up. Zach Charbonnet, running back, UCLA. He's 22 years of age. He's 6'1". He's about two inches taller than Jameer Gibbs. 220 pounds. He's a big boy um, in comparison. Projected 40 time, about a 4.53. Um, stats, in 2022, Charbonnet recorded 195 carries for 1,359 yards, which is about a seven-yard average, and 14 touchdowns. Yes, kid is really good, fast. Something I didn't really know um, that I learned about him doing some research. I didn't know he used to play for Michigan, which was pretty interesting. As everybody knows, I'm a big Ohio State fan. I do follow the Big Ten, um, but I don't really follow Michigan, of course. You know, it's being the rivals with the Buckeyes and all. Um, but one thing I will say about the Big Ten, they're a run-first type of system. Every team is all about running the ball. They're defenses are built to stop the run um so he he would have experienced a grueling similar nfl style um defense um in the big 10 and the fact that he and he was very successful in his freshman year um i believe he rushed for over 750 yards uh several touchdowns um it, you know had a really successful season and then he, because of the COVID year, 2020, and everything that happened, he ended up transferring to UCLA. Now, there's, um, from my understanding, it's due to personal reasons. He wanted to be closer to family um, and, you know, that kind of stuff, which, you know, that's fine. Um, but he's been very, he's been able to take that success and put up great numbers, as you can see, with UCLA. Um, let's see what they say about his strengths. Rusher with a great combination of overall size, strength, with excellent speeds. So the guy is great size, great speed, has the feet and feel running between the tackles and in the open field. He has very good vision and the patience to pick through defen defenses. Very interesting. Um, fights for extra yardage and is reliable in short yardage situations. Watching tape on this guy, it's everybody was saying that when he gets hit, he's always falling forward. He he will fall forward, get you that extra yard or two by doing so every time. Um, improving patience as a runner, 
following pulling guards and makes good decisions on his cuts. Good. Very good to hear that. Strong interior runner quickly passes the line of scrimmage and has a burst to get through the line of scrimmage and into the second level quickly. A classic north-south runner who doesn't waste time moving laterally. I like that. I don't like running running backs that want to waste time, you know, kind of dance until they make a decision. I don't like that. Hit the hole and go. North-south. Let's do it. Um, demonstrated the ability to track the ball over his shoulder. Good, good flexibility and balance to adjust to the poorly thrown pass. Um, good vision and patience for screens. This is good to know. That means that he can catch balls that are off schedule um, or may not be as perfect as it, is it he wants it to be. He has that ability. I like that. Very physical runner. Keeps his legs churning on contact. Rarely goes down with the first hit. Lowers the shoulder into defenders and shows pure determination with natural running skills to break free and the stiff arm and spin move to dodge tacklers. That's awesome. Um, he has good vi uh, vision to find the holes and get north-south. Gets a good initial push and always seems to be falling forward, as I said, for a positive gain. A hard runner with a workhorse-type back mentality. So this is a workhorse-type back. Um, you know, he's fast, hits the hole. Um he doesn't, you know, sits there and wastes time. He makes his decision and determination, um, lowers his shoulder, great pass catching ability. Um, you know, a lot, a lot to want there out of a running back. I, I like what I saw there. Now for the cons, <clears throat> loses momentum when he, he gears down to change direction and it takes him a few steps. So essentially, what they're saying is it takes him a few steps to accelerate to back to full speed. So when he hits the hole and he has to maybe cut to the right um, or the left um, or go around somebody, sometimes it takes him a little bit to get back. He has to slow down and then get build his speed back up. Um, appears indecisive, will dance too much at the line of scrimmage, lacks natural playmaking ability. Well, that's a little bit different than what I kind of understood based on the the um, pros. So they're saying he dances too much. Already, I don't like that. I don't like running backs to dance too much. Hopefully, once we get the combine, we get a little bit more clear, um, a more clear idea of his strengths and weaknesses um, as this is pre-combine uh, and everything. He's more fast and quick and doesn't have the super quickness um, you will pound on elite backs. Okay. Uh, doesn't make tackles tacklers miss. Needs to develop a great bag of tricks if he is going to succeed in the pros. Ugh. His hands are not great. He drops passes when he's not ex that he's not expecting. Needs to improve his overall awareness. Has a little in pass protection and poor technique cut blocking. Mm. Very interesting. Okay, so. The pros made it sound a little bit better. Cons brings you more to reality. So he has stuff he has to work on. He yes, he can catch balls that you know not are not necessarily pr thrown perfectly to him, um, but certain passes if he's not aware of it or not really paying attention or being you know anticipating it, he that he can't really catch them or he has issues with them. Um, offers little in pass protection and poor technique cut blocking. Uh, yeah, I don't really think this is the guy for us either. Sounded great. All the pros sound great. The pass blocking is very important to me. We already don't necessarily have the best offensive line, and I we need to make sure we're able to protect our quarterback. Let it be Tua or whoever it may be in the future. We want to make sure we keep them healthy and protected when needed. Um, we need to be able to make sure that we possess the ability to, one, identify the read properly, make sure you're making the appropriate block and also the proper technique, not just cut blocking, but blocking in general. All right, next guy. This guy, I've been on tape on different shows, you know, here at the Finn's Tailgate or other shows that um, on YouTube stating that Sean Tucker was probably going to be the guy that we draft. 
Um, he's 21 years of age. He's 5'10", 205 pounds, projected 40 time, four, about a 4.54. Four. Tucker averaged 5.1 yards per carry in 2022 for 1,060 yards and 11 touchdowns. He also caught 36 passes for 254 yards and two more scores. So he had 13 touchdowns during the year. That's a lot. And on over a thousand, you know, all purpose yards, heck yeah. Definitely a good option. Good kid there. I uh, put back to back 1,000 seasons. Uh, actually, um, I checked out 2021. He had over a thousand yards as well, several touchdowns. Definitely proven kid. Um, let's go to see what they say about him. Tucker finishes, runs well, and flashes the ability uh, to get small and squeeze through traffic. He's a quality receiver with soft hands. Tucker shows a good feel for catching and transitioning upfield in the screen game. He's at best uh, working in space and showing the quickness and vision of, the um, of a return specialist. This is something good to know. Uh, his stop-start ability allows him to create initial separation, flashes initial burst in good lateral quickness to sidestep defenders or bounce runs outside with every good foot quickness displays a very good feel as an inside and outside runner and the above average vision to make sharp cuts good patience and footwork to pick through def defenses possesses quick feet and straight line speed but doesn't have elite burst to be a constant big play threat, improving patience as a runner, following uh, pulling guards, and makes good decisions on his cuts. A small but boldly built runner has a scat back skill set, but is more effective between the tackles than you might expect. This is the kind of guy I thought we would bring in. He's fast, you know, he has a lot of different skill set flash, you know, he can get the separation that we need. He's really good in transitioning upfield in the screen game, um, improving uh, patience as a runner following pulling guards, makes good decisions on his cuts. You know, a lot of different things to, to like there. Now for the cons. Tucker has a slight build, um, especially for running back, and Tucker isn't going to grind out yardage between the tackles as he lacks the power and runs with a fairly high pad level. It seems like against these big time teams, let it be Buffalo Bills, because it seemed like two out of the three times we played them last season, we couldn't fight for those extra yards that we needed in the fourth quarter to grind out the yardage. We we couldn't do that properly. That's something I kind of want to see a little bit more from a running back we bring in. Now, do all of them need that ability? No, but I want to at least have one or two that I can rely on that they'll they'll fight for those yards too indecisive and hesitant at the line of scrimmage um that kind of concerns me as well if he's hesitant he may not be taking the ball um or hitting the hole properly there's a lot of different issues with that that you know can it, it, it messes up with the timing the rhythm there's a lot of issues that you know can come out of that his playing speed is less than elite tucker won't run past defenders like he did at the college level. So they're already saying that he doesn't necessarily have the elite blazing speed or the speed that you need in the NFL. So he has a lot of ups. Um, I really like to look at tape for all of these guys. The tape tells sometimes a little bit different story. Um, so definitely watch highlights, go look it up, see what you think. You know, there's a lot to be learned from this. These are just opinions based on scouts and people that, have done their analysis. Now, the last guy we're going to talk about, he's the guy that I think the Dolphins will draft and should draft. Um, I am very high on this kid. Chase Brown, running back, Illinois. He's got his hand up and saying, yeah, Miami, you're taking me. I'm your guy. Pick me. That's right. That's right. So let's talk about him. He's 22 years of age. He's 5'11", 215 pounds, Projected time, a 4-4-2-40. Well, that's fast. I have seen some people say that he's more of a 4-3 guy. I can't be quoted on that. I can only go based on what I was reading. Um, 
I'm going to go with 442 because uh, two of the two out of the many different websites I said they were more consistent. And I'm going to go with that until we see what happens at a combine. In 2022, Brown averaged five yards per carry for 1,643 yards and 10 touchdowns. He also t- also took 27 receptions and three touchdowns. That's right, three touchdowns. I recommend you go watch this kid. Go watch the tape. This guy is pretty much the most shiftiest. Um, this kid has the most shiftiest moves out of all the running backs in, in this draft. The kid makes people miss all over the place. Very, very impressive. He, uh, I'm, I'm going I'm to read his strengths and his cons, and I'm going to tell you who the comparison is because I, and you'll see at the end why I think this is going to be the guy. So his initial burst is excellent. He's capable of running out of a traditional setup um, or taking the ball lined up next to a quarterback in shotgun. Uh, He is equally dangerous in catch and run situations as Brown is taking the top off the defense. Made Bruce Feldman's freak list ranked 33. He wrote, Chase Brown, a 6-foot, 207-pound running back, made the all-big 10 third team, in 2021 after rushing for 1,005 yards and five touchdowns. He added four pounds of lean muscle mass this summer while losing three pounds of fat. He also reached 22.5 on the GPS on one of his long touchdown runs last year. So the guy has blazing speed, as you can already see. His passing game skills are strong. He's natural hands catcher who turns upfield quickly. So he catches with his hands. I already like the guy already. Um, So he turns up the field quickly in the screen game and shows great feel for setting up wheel routes. That's awesome. He's a quality receiver with soft hands, shows a good feel for catching and transitioning upfield in the screen game, which I already read. Uh, His vision is outstanding and has an innate understanding of when to go and when to sit back and wait for blocks to develop. Brown thrives on one cut back. That's awesome. Uh, He's capable as a receiver, a weapon on swing passes, and in the screen game. Very interesting. Watch the kid's tape. The guy, when when he gets hit, he keeps going. People fly off of him. He spins. He, he, you know, can put his put out the stiff arm. He does a lot on the field. Very, very impressive. Um, I honestly am predicting, based on what I saw and what I'm reading, and not just from, you know, one source but multiple different sources, I'm predicting this guy to be the Damian Pierce of this draft. Now he's not my comparison. No, wait to the end. I'll give you my comparison. That's just, he's that type of running back that, yeah, he's probably going to go in the third or fourth round, but he's going to be an instant starter. Very impressive. So let's keep talking about him. So let's go to the cons. The cons say Brown has consistently ran a limited route tree. Yes, but that could be various different things. That could be the scheme that he's in, the offense that that team is playing, you know? Um, that could be, you know, maybe they, that team or coach wanted to maximize his skill talent on certain, you know, certain routes, you know, that will give him the best success or give them the best success. I think that's a coachable thing. I don't think it's something that you can, you know, you, you can't learn out of, you know what I mean? Um, he's shaky as a pass protection capable of, uh, I'm sorry, he's shaky in pass protection. Okay. But He's capable of making the correct reads, but too reliant on the cut um, blocks. When Brown does stay on his feet, he's too often ducks his head and lunges at the player. So, yes, his pass blocking isn't the best, but he's capable of making the correct read, which I like, because as long as you can make the correct read, I think with coaching, your pass blocking can get better. Um, He ducks his head down and lunges, yeah, that you need to work on it. You need to be able to set your feet properly. Um, you know, get your hands low and everything. There's there's different things that the running backs can do to to get better at that. Um, and I think he he can work through those. He's not physically imposing. Brown is small framed, won't be able to carry much more weight. Um I'm gonna agree to disagree on that. 
Uh, this kid, if if you see his 2021 video, go look at the 22 video. Looks like two different running backs. The guy is molding himself into be a pure star. I I think in this league, um, his comparison, in my opinion, and. I'm actually not the only person that thinks this. There's actually two people that he reminds me a lot of if you watch him on tape. One, yours ours truly, Raheem, uh, Raheem Mostert. I think he's a spot on for him, but also looks very similar to Jamal Williams combined. You take those two running backs, put them together, that's the running back you're getting. Um, the guy is not afraid to take hits. He'll take it up the middle. Um, he can make the cuts properly. Very fast, can you know go zero to however many miles per hour, you know, instantly. You know, nothing really seems to slow him down once he's in the open field. Very, very impressive. Just go watch the tape, you'll see what I'm talking about. This is the guy I want. This is the guy I think we should draft. And uh, yeah, um, I really think we should definitely be able to get him in the lower, um, the later third round, or even. If, you know, if we have a fourth round pick, we can get him in the fourth round. Um, you know, that I think that's where he's going to go. I think between the third and fourth round is really where he would go. All right. Um, what else do I have on the docket? So those are the running backs I've talked about. Make sure you, you know, hit like and subscribe. Turn on notifications. Put it in the comments who you think we should draft. What do you think about these running backs? What are your thoughts? Um <clears throat> I, these are just some of the guys that I really think that we're going to target. And actually, I really believe one of these guys on this list will be drafted by the Miami Dolphins. That's what I'm predicting. Um, last week, as you all know, I did linebackers last week. We're going to do different shows, different positions. We'll break them down. I'm only going to talk about the guys that I really think we have a high chance of actually drafting. So that's the guys I'm going to talk about. I had a question that got proposed to me <clears throat> based on my last episode. Um, what do you think about Trenton Simpson, linebacker from Clemson? Well, Trenton Simpson is one of those freak athletes um, that it has a lot of athletic ability that is, how should I say, is generational at times, but at, also at the same time, he has it, it, he just has too much ability for him to possibly fall to us he's that first round high very high second round kind of guy i expect him to go in the first round to be honest um things to know about him if you if you don't know who he is uh, he's a line, middle linebacker showed initial quickness good flexibility to dip bend simpson has active hands and suddenness in uh in his movements demonstrating the ability to counter inside shows a burst of um burst to close flashes explosive hitting ability and good lateral and downfield pursuit um he made the bruce feldman's freak list again the guy is 6'3 240 pounder who only had six percent body fat ranked third on the team with 78 tackles finished second in both tackles for loss um and uh sacks he had 12 tackles for loss and six sacks um, <clears throat> Simpson bench presses 375 pounds, power clean 355, and has a vertical jump of 35 inches and done 10, 10 to 2 on the broad jump. Uh, more impressively, Tiger's coaches say that he has he has run for the 40 in the four threes. So they're saying, coaches are saying, this kid can run a 4 3 40. Yeah, this guy is not falling to us um, at, at 52. I just don't see it. If he does, yeah, you, at that point, then you're going to draft this kid. Um, I think he has the ability to, you know, be the cover type of linebacker we need as well as make sure we, he protects us from the run and, and track down quarterbacks when we need him to. Um, I think he he has that ability. Um the only issues I've read about him, he has a as athletic as he is um, and how good he is attacking downhill, he sometimes over pursues players. Um, and that, you know, when they that basically counteracts what he's trying to do or what his attack pursuit. So that can be an issue. Um, lacks the ability to drop weight and anchor against the run. 
often setting uh, manhandled at the point of attack. Um, has it down? Had a down year in two thousand. I think it was twenty. It was supposed to be twenty twenty. This. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. This uh, thing is. It said there was a mistype here. I apologize. Um, Simpson wasn't asked to stack much at the second level. Okay. We'll probably need to add muscle mass. Yeah, he is kind of on the lighter side a little bit. Um, they have met 240. Eh, I don't, I don't say 240. I don't think that's too bad. I could see him gain about 10, maybe 15 pounds at very most, maybe a little bit less than that, to be honest. I don't think that's too bad, but the kid is a freak athlete. Go watch the tape. I like this kid. If he's there, we draft him. That's what I think. Um, but anyway, so that's the episode. Really appreciate everybody coming out. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. This is Broken Takes, a TFTG production. I'm out. Bins up.